Oh, I'm sorry, I had visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. And speaking of dancing, we are at the Pacific Northwest Ballet, going behind the scenes of one of the most magical traditions of the season, the Nutcracker. New Day starts now. It's a new From Seattle's McCall Hall, this is a special holiday presentation of New Day Northwest. Here's Amity and Tracy. Good morning and welcome to this very special episode of New Day coming to you from the Pacific Northwest Ballet. It's a beautiful holiday episode that we're bringing to you today. And let me tell you, this place is so magical. McCaw Hall is draped in decorations and surrounded by scenes right out of the Nutcracker performance. It is like walking in a winter wonderland, if you know what I mean. Or should I say dancing? Today we're going behind the scenes to see how they create the gorgeous costumes, make it snow, and how these incredible dancers get ready for their performances. And speaking of which, I just saw the performance the other day with my kids' school. We got a special treat and got to take the kids to a matinee performance. And let me tell you, it was honestly amazing. This was the first time many of these kids had ever seen the performance, my son included, but I have a feeling it's a tradition we'll be continuing. And it's time for one of my favorite traditions, Hot Topics, and we have some of our favorite guests here. What a great way to kick off this very festive hour. Jay Martin Jr. is here. <laughs> Shelly Hart from Warm 106.9 and executive producer Joseph <gasps> Sutton. Hello. Thanks all for being here. Isn't this Yay. great? Oh, this is so festive. Oh this really Amazing. is. It's so fun to be behind the scenes, right? Mm. To be here. But I have to say, Christmas. It's not too far off. No, mm -hmm. oh. it is not. Mm. So we were talking about some holiday food traditions in a meeting the other day, and it apparently is a hot topic among New Day staff. Um, I admitted that I love my family. Our family tradition is to make Christmas cookies, but mm. in the flavor of anise. Anise. Oh, look at this. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, oh no. No. <laughs> See? And my husband, he looks. And my grandma the other day, and he's like, can you please make regular cookies? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. We've been doing this for how many years? <laughs> oh. Like 50 years. Oh, so this is a recipe that's been handed down. Yes. Okay, Have you well, modified it at all? I mean, ish. Uh, well, part of his complaint was it looks like a regular sugar cookie, right? So oh. if you're going to bite it thinking you're getting a sugar oh, cookie, then you get good. licorice. That's, what it is. that's a little that's bit. That's what it is. You know, I, I, could, I could see that. Yeah. Okay, we've been together like almost 20 years. He should know by now so it's not going to be a sugar <laughs> cookie. He should know, yeah. Jeez yeah. Louise. I go the easy way. Just get the pack of sugar cookie dough, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we all get in the kitchen. We make it, and I get the little buttercream frosting, and have Boom, fun. Done. <laughs> do, you, like do you guys have any holiday traditions, like food-wise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My sister comes over and takes over the kitchen, and she makes that Chex Mix Christmas Crunch. Ooh, so good. You know, the one with yeah. the Chex Mix and the M&Ms, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. do different flavors. Look at it. Take, literally, see? She takes over my counter <laughs> with this, and she and, and drizzles it with white chocolate, mm. and mm. you crunch it all up, you know, break it up, and put it yeah, in hungry. bags or mason jars, why are, why and I'll tell you what. Why you You know what? Sister of Shelly Hart. But it is delicious. One of those things where you take a bite, if you're at a party, and you look around, if no one's watching, I'm gonna go back for a few more. Oh, I love bites, that. You know, mm. Delicious. One thing I love about the holidays is sharing traditions. Mm -hmm. So in my family, we make these things called pepper cocker cookies. They're Swedish. Ooh. My family's Japanese. And so the reason we do that is because when my mom was growing up, her neighbor was Swedish, and they would make the cookies together. Oh, it's not cute. That's and then it just wonderful. keeps Aww. coming down the line. You know, right? Oh, so, you know. That's so much better than They're like my... gingerbread cookies, yes. and they're, they're awesome. delicious, but they take a lot of work to make. So it's like a once a year thing. But, you know. It's a once a year yeah, thing. It's fun. I love that. Yeah. I do. I do. You know what's so funny is, is food is so much a part of family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do actually actually miss my great grandmother would always bring a jello mold oh. and I mean you guys oh, as okay. the years went on the, the things she would put one year she shows up I don't know there was like ham and yeah. some peas in it in, your oh, no. in the jello mold oh no and we literally I was like thank you grandma and my mom's like put it in the garage put it in the garage and it's she's like asking about it all like, where's my jello mold did you see and I'm like ah Wait, is, it, oh, is it savory no. jello? I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry, great Oh my goodness. Savory jello? I don't know what Well, they're kind of done in a bunt can, right? Yeah. Or a bunt pan yeah, yeah, yeah. and flip it over but and it's got this great. That's for pound cake. That's what that's meant for. That's it. <laughs> that's not, not, not for that's not, not ham and 
Yeah, peas, yeah, but yeah. that's me. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about movies. Uh, I've been enjoying a lot of holiday movies, but we're going to talk right now about the top 10 movies for 2023 according to IMDb. Okay. okay. Number okay. one, Oppenheimer. Didn't see it. Mm. Yep. Two, Past Lives. What was that? Three, Killers of the Flower Moon. Four, Poor Things. Five, Anatomy of Fall. Hmm. And we've got Spider Man, The Holdovers, Mission Impossible. About dry grasses, John it. Wick is number ten. Wow. But number twenty-five shocked me. Barbie. Wait, really? I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense. And what's really funny is, out of that whole list, that's the one movie I have seen. That's the only movie <laughs> I've yes. seen. I'm yes. serious. Barbie. That was like amazing. That was the a top ten for me. Yeah. 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 It was. I, I mean, really I understand. It. I mean, I loved Barbie. I felt like maybe it was a few years later than it should have been. Uh -huh. Like we could have used that movie yep. ten years ago, but yeah. of course we could have made it ten years ago. Anyway, I digress. My whole point is. Why is it 25? I don't know. That, yeah. Yeah. That's weird. I, it's well, number nine for me. I appreciate the list because now I have a watch list for the next couple of weeks. Yes. So there you go. I really yes. want to see Oppenheimer, but you saw Past Lives. We and have I the director on our show. I loved it. We writer. did. Yeah, the director, yeah, she was here for Sif. And I got to say, what a sad movie, but it's so good. <laughs> I've talked about this on the show before. If you've ever been in love, this is a movie you should watch. It wow. will hit you right in the feels, yeah. make you think about things. Mm. Just cannot recommend it enough. Okay, I'm going to watch it. I'll watch yeah. it. And I thought Barbie had too much Ken in it for me. Really? really? Yeah, yeah. No. Sorry. What? Knuff. Oh yeah. my goodness. I've had a Knuff of Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Ken. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about this list, IMDb. So yeah. I mean, we love you, but mm. yeah. I know. Um, okay, let's talk Christmas shopping now. Oh boy. Mm. Okay. Are you doing any last minute? How close do you call it? Do you shop in stores or online? I don't know. I get kind of a rush, and I've been trying for the life of me to get a little earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm usually the guy that's like a week before yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm running around, but I think it's fun to see people just rushing and like, hi, how are you? And you run into people and you realize you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. kind of fun to experience I'm with you it. Yeah, but every year I'm like, I can't believe I, you know, have you ever seen the movie Jingle All the Way? <laughs> when, they go, <laughs> when they try to find the toy, that's me. I'm like trying to find the one item and everybody's laughing at me. but. I do it every year, I so know, I that's hear you. me. <laughs> well, you know there's been, working for the Christmas station, there's so many events that I have to attend, mm -hmm. and now that all the community trees are all lit up, yes. and I have time to go shopping, but what I really appreciate about the Northwest is that we have so many pop-up markets. Yes. yes. And, and local artists mm -hmm. and vendors, and there's so many wonderful things, so if there's right. an event, there's yeah. usually a pop-up market, right. and right. you can do some really great shopping that way. Oh, mm -hmm. that's smart. That yeah. is smart. You know yeah. what? Wow. Double duty there, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. No, I, I honestly, I mean, I try every year too to, to, mm -hmm, to get mm -hmm, it in, mm -hmm. but I actually, there's something I love about going out, getting that cup of coffee and like yep. being immersed yeah. in, the, in, the, in the decorations and the lights and the smell of- And the crowds. And the crowds. <laughs> and the smell of sho shopping. Yes. Oh, the smell of shopping. The stress, mm. the smell of stress. Yeah. Oh, that's true. As that's a producer, true. I feel like I should be a little more on the ball with the Christmas shopping. Every year I'm like, I'm gonna start before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, we're way past Thanksgiving Never and I happens. need to get on the ball. So, yeah. so. Every, year Every year I also think too, I'm not gonna buy gifts this year. I'm just gonna do something this or that. Never right. do, and I end up rushing Bye. to get gifts last yep. minute. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, okay, so anyway, after <laughs> Christmas, we have New Year's. Yes, mm -hmm. very exciting. And actually, it's a very exciting uh, year this year because mm. New Day Northwest will be representing yes. at New Year's at the Needle right here. Oh, oh that's just exciting. Behind us. Yes, so uh, I'm hosting with Evenings Jim Dever. Okay. Y'all, I asked, I go, how in the world did they approve the most <laughs> unhinged <laughs> folks to do this together, but I mean, oh, hey, it's Jim, Jim, to remember. Jim is great. Mm -hmm. He'll be a blast. You guys are going to be great together. Mm -hmm. Is that your first time doing That's something? That's our first time oh. doing. Oh this wow! Oh, yeah. oh, it'll it, be. It's going to be. I great. might have to crash that party. Oh, crash the party, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good one. Cause, yeah, because I do figgy pudding with with Jim, so mm -hmm. he, oh, he's mm -hmm. oh, he Shelly, we're going to have to talk about this. Yeah. Later. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to need you to. But what are you guys doing for, for New Year's? Do you do anything? I'm too tired. I don't even know how I'm going to make it to the broadcast. I'm going to be honest. By the time New Year's comes around. I'm going to be sitting on the couch watching you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh. I'm probably throw a little party, yeah. something fun. Uh, Say hi to friends, reach out to folks, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm Michelle. I'm hoping to be on the couch, champagne, TV, nothing That's crazy. Come on, yeah, <laughs> come on now. Yes. So, Amity, you represent for us. Mm -hmm. yes. I can't wait to see you on the show, though. It's going to be super fun. It's going to be great. We, um, we have so many fun things planned. It's going to be it's going to be really, really great to, to, oh. to celebrate, to bring in the new year, to do all the things. Yeah. Which I'm excited about. I think 2023 was a really good year. Yeah. It was. It was. Like, mm -hmm. I had a friend the other day ask me, what did 2023 represent for you? And for me, mm. it was wow. learning my value, knowing my worth. Mm. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Any mm -hmm. thoughts on you guys? I, you know, mm -hmm. honestly, for me, I could tag that as well. Really, yeah. just understanding and really walking into like ownership. Yeah. Like not being afraid. Like when you step into something, just go for it. Mm -hmm. So 2023 was like that for me. Yeah. And now I'm like really wanting to usher that into 2024. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. You know, I think for me, I still feel like I'm coming out of COVID. Same. Right? Mm -hmm. Same. And, and so I, especially with all the holiday events, I have an all new appreciation mm -hmm. for people and the work that is put into all of the events. We have so many around the Puget Sound yeah. Yeah. and the community is getting together and engaging yeah. with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't take anything for granted like That's that. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. I feel like 2023, weird year for me. I learned a lot about myself this year for a lot of different reasons, but what I hope for the next year is that I take all the lessons I learned this year and actually apply them to my life in 2024. Yes. And much like you, I feel like this was a really coming out of COVID year yeah. and mm -hmm. lots of socializing and doing stuff and yeah. I'm ready for 2024. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for joining <laughs> me for Hot Topics. This has been yes. awesome. And y'all, we have much more ahead in this very special holiday special from the Pacific Northwest Ballet. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be talking to the ballet's costume department about how they make all the dancers look so amazing mm -hmm. on stage. And then later, we're going to get a behind-the-scenes peek at how they make it snow inside during the Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Welcome back to this very special edition of New Day Northwest. We're coming to you from Macaw Hall, which is the home of the Pacific Northwest Ballet. And as you look around, this entire space is decked to the nines, so beautiful, just for the Nutcracker, which, by the way, runs through December 27th. And joining me now is the woman who oversees all the dazzling costumes in this production, <laughs> Melita Buckstaff. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. These costumes on stage almost are a character of themselves. They move around so beautifully. How many costumes are in the Nutcracker? Well, there's 156 rolls per show, so there's 156 costumes out uh, on stage every show. My goodness. So nearly everything here that we're seeing was created by hand. You weren't ordering these costumes. You weren't ordering even the, the fabrics, right? Yeah, we our, our costume shop team um, and costume makers all over Seattle actually built um, all of our costumes by hand. And uh, this one is actually a great example of the, the work? design work that um, Ian Falconer did. He had this very specific graphic design that he wanted, right. but you can't just buy fabric that's exactly this pattern. Right. So uh, what they did was they uh, cut each of these shapes, a local company laser cut all of these shapes, and then someone uh, stitched every single one Hand on. Uh, they'd used a machine, but it was one by one, every shape got stitched on, and then it was made into a dress. Y'all, if you could see, I'm looking at this with the naked eye. I mean, it's amazing. It is so beautiful. And then, of course, underneath it, too, is the little bit of shimmer that sparkles so beautifully on stage. Mm. This one was one of my favorite dances, the candy cane, where they're jumping through the candy cane hope. It's so cool. It's really so fun. It's, it's you have to be able to move in it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that was amazing to me is I thought this was just a pattern, but no. No, it was a specific design that Ian came up with. He really uh, was amazing with colors and patterns. Um, and you can't just buy a fabric like this. So. It's uh, strips of stretch velvet that were cut individually and then stitched on. So somebody spent time to stitch all of those lines on uh, so that it would go in a diagonal around the body. Um, I mean, there's geometry involved in that. Yeah. Did someone get a protractor around? Because that's insane. Yeah. Wow, and it's so, it's so rich looking. The fact that you can tell from the audience all far back, how rich these costumes are, how beautiful mm -hmm. and, and full of life they really are and bring to the stage. Yeah. These bold colors and unique prints is something very, um, it's now kind of part of the show after the redesign. It's something yeah. that is very special to Seattle, isn't it? Yeah, it's particular to our production. We have really great colors mm -hmm. and, and, and pattern work that that team did on all of our 
costumes. It's so great. Like Mother Ginger, Mother Harley Ginger. Quinn and Columbine. Okay, and talk all about Mother Ginger for a second fabulous. because I, we have some video of her I think we're going to show. But if you don't know, Mother Ginger comes out and all the children come out of her skirt. And I thought, and I asked her, I go, how does that work? So give us kind of a rundown of how it happens. Well, it's quite a process. <laughs> There's the, so it's a, it's a male company dancer who does that role. There are several. And they spend a fair amount of time in the wig and makeup room getting prepared. And then there's a top half of the costume, a bodice that they put on. And then the skirt itself is a metal welded frame that has its own crane backstage. It has its own crane. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. And they, uh, the dancers wear stilts that are, um, decided how high based on their height so that the skirt is exactly at the right okay. height for the um, for the stage so that it doesn't drag on the ground or Because there's no wheels on much. it. The actual dancer is helping to move it along. Yep, the dancer's wearing it. It's it's There's a harness that they um, can walk into the skirt and then there's wardrobe and props crew who clip them into it and um, they have this big giant skirt that's so I'm just assuming, suspended from them. I'm assuming that's the hardest costume to get on and off then out of all of them. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> the most complicated. Um, so I know that you do a lot of uh, mending of these costumes because they go through so many shows every year. But mm -hmm. I want to ask you about the ballet slippers. I understand <laughs> those have a short life. They do. For a dancer who has point shoes, like this costume, they would be wearing point mm -hmm. shoes with them. Sugar Plum Fairy on point. Mm -hmm. Um, the, it depends on the dancer and the mm. role, but it can be, uh, as many as one pair per show, um, over the course of a whole season, a, a average number of shoes that a dancer might go through would be about 80. Wow. Um, and. Well, cause it's so on it, satin, right? And you're doing, there is mm -hmm. a moment in the show, you all where the Sugar Plum Fairy is in this position and, and just being dragged kind of by her partner. It's crazy, it's a crazy <laughs> moment. So I understand now about having to replace the, uh, the, the slippers very often. Mm -hmm. Before I let you go, I have to ask, what is your favorite costume? It's kind of, it's kind of like asking to pick, pick, your favorite pick kid? a favorite child. <laughs> How about um, it's, it's the flowers like me? I, I, do, I do love the flower costumes. Their movement is really, just really beautiful. They were very well engineered by the Draper who made them. And the colors are just so bright Phenomenal. and vibrant and fun. And I love watching that scene. It has been so fun talking to you, Melita. Thank you for sharing all this and bringing out these costumes for us to see. Knowing what has gone into them really makes the experience so much more full and enjoyable. <laughs> thank you so much. Sure, thank this you. This is really, really exciting. All right, well, when yeah. New Day continues, we're gonna have some great gift ideas for you inspired for the holidays. We'll be right back. Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Welcome back, it's the holiday season. So we are all in the gift giving mood. So we thought we'd grab some fun, creative, artsy ideas for those creative people in your life. And of course, producer Susie went all around town oh, yeah. gathering some really cool items. What do we yeah. got here? Well, we have from the sweet to the slightly creepy to the little bit cheeky to the literally cheeky. So <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Let's right. get cheeky. Okay. First up, Rifle Paper Company. You know them for their great textiles and wrapping papers. Yes. I think sketchbooks are great things to give artists. Yes. And, and people who like to journal, they have beautiful sketchbooks with that are textured. Mm -hmm. This one has bugs on it. They have some florals. They have beautiful journals that are just hefty and the, the weight of the paper is beautiful. I really love it. They also have something in their, their book club collection. And this is their mug with all of the um, classics How on it. Lovely. So somebody really into literature and arts would love that. They also have a beautiful book set with Anne of Green Gables, the little princess. And it's with the beautiful traditional more style bindings. Right, and all hand hand inspired um, papers done by the co-founder Anna Bond. So a beautiful gift to give. I love that. Another option I think is I spent an afternoon in the uh, books in the bookshop and the shop gift for shop. gift shop at Seattle Art Museum and they have wonderful items. I love their books. First of all, I said there's something kind of cheeky. This is museum buns. It's just a a real fun okay. gift to give this somebody. Is amazing. Cheeky butts in art. I mean, I you know. Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't it's love that? It's funny. It's cute. It's yeah. a, it's you know 
But, buts, of course. Buts, of course. And painting the palette is a cookbook inspired by the great artists. Oh, how fun. Yeah, so somebody who likes to cook, but great also loves ideas, art. Suze. Really good ideas. This is a uh, Oregon artist, and her name is Beth Grimsrud, and she takes cashmere sweaters no longer used and she makes beautiful hats well, she upcycles them she upcycles them she makes these fingerless gloves oh they, look and they're reversible can you i mean you just feel that quality oh, that's so nice people throw out their cashmere sweaters and beth finds i mean them i don't know who's throwing out their cashmere sweaters but i'm glad beth found them <laughs> i am too all right and what is this okay <laughs> thing here people have been commenting on this this is tacoma glass artist oliver doris and he makes these glass baby head cups so yeah, it looks like the, the yeah. head of my kid's baby doll. And well, why is it a glass? What's he, the story? Well, well, he when he was younger, living with a bunch of different artists, somebody brought home a trash bag full of doll parts, heads, legs, and they started creating with them. And okay. out of that, he started doing glass work and this these baby head cups. That, okay, that's fun. Actually, that's uh, a know. great conversation piece. Yeah. <laughs> We've also got these Oh Happy Feet, which have got all I these love fun these. names. Like This is from Chatty Feet, and they did an artist line, and I love it. You can see the one you've got is Screamy Ed. From the screen, there's also Frida Callas, and of course, hi, I'm Fitasso. I just That's just a fun, whimsical love it. item. Yep. Only 30 seconds left. Okay. This is one of my favorites. Tell me about this store. Seattle Recreative. Art items are very expensive. You can get gently used items and things are $1.50. You see patterns, you see books, scissors, pens. You know what's a great idea is what? to give them a gift certificate because think how how far your gift certificate would go. It's something like that. And I Seattle Recreative. I can't say much about too much about that. I love that. That's great for the kids because my kids are always needing supplies. Oh my gosh, Susie, thank you for You're all welcome. these ideas. We have more fun and magic from McCaw Hall coming up next. Welcome back to New Day in Northwest. Welcome back to the show. Man, we have not been able to control this yucky weather that we've had outside lately, but here at the Pacific Northwest Ballet, they actually control an indoor snowstorm. It's amazing. And our New Day editor, Gloria Angelin, got a peek behind the curtain to see how they do it. Gloria, show us how it's done. How the Pacific Northwest Ballet make their fake snow? I'm going to take you behind the scenes on how they do that. Oh, I mean not this fake snow, I made this one. I mean this beautiful snow. We have three people operating the snow. The snow comes out of big long cloth fabric. Along the fabric, a whole bunch of holes. And as we move the bag up and down, we expose the holes so that all of a sudden the snow just spread out across the pipe, falling down through the holes. And then we have special lights pointing directly at the snow so that as it comes down from the air, you actually see what the snow looks like and it catches just little glints as it flutters down to the ground from about 40, 45 feet up in the air. The snowstorm, it's the exact same how we do the regular snow, it's just moving the ropes faster. We also are, get a little bit of a benefit from our counterparts in the electrics department who have giant Hollywood style fans that are pointing at the snow to get a little bit of a swirling motion into them. So it gets a little bit more of that wind and storm effect. The snow is a type of paper. Can I see the snow? <laughs> kind of looks like if you take a whole bunch of hole punches from a ream of paper. So this is how the snow looks like. We have a couple other shapes than just round punches, but we have stars and things like that. This paper, there's a flame retardant built into it. At the end of every performance, or during intermission, we sweep up all the snow, we take it through magnets to remove any bobby pins, anything that should not be there with the snow. And then every week or so, depending on how many performances we have, we bring all the snow bags back down to the stage level refill them all, fluff them out so they're kind of relatively even across, and then we take them up and cycle it through again. And some of the snow has probably been used for multiple years worth of performances. Gloria, that was amazing. I love seeing how the magic behind the scenes works. 
Now let's talk about the people who make the magic happen on the stage, the dancers. I'm joined now by two dancers from the Nutcracker cast, soloist Amanda Morgan and Clara Kane Crosby, a student in the professional division. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for having us. So Amanda, I have to say, we were just talking about the roles that you played. The thing that fascinates me is how you are able to do so many different roles. You said you do do drop, you do the sugar plum fairy. How do you how do you keep them all straight, and and how do you prepare for that? Yeah. So as you add roles, as you get older, it's kind of like once you learn a role, it stays in your body memory and your memory in general. So really, really, when you hear the music, it's kind of like. Even though I don't do, like, a snowflake anymore, mm -hmm. I will still know that dance forever. <laughs> and so, like, even, like, as she's getting older, she'll add more and more roles as you go on. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes it can be, like, a little overwhelming. But to be honest, I've, like, taken some roles away now being promoted. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's always fun just to learn new things and just to, like, keep growing as an artist. I think that's amazing. Claire, you are a snowflake. Are you a snowflake or snow mm -hmm. fairy now? Yeah. I'm a snowflake. We do about three different spots each. So we're learning a bunch of different roles inside that one dance. So it's really, it's really interesting. What, what amazes me is seeing you perform solo, but when you all do the, the parts where you kind of intermesh between each other, I mean, that's crazy choreography. Yeah. It must take a lot of practice. A lot it of does. practice, a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. um, I would say like the rehearsal director that works with them a lot, yeah. she's always looking at every little intricate detail just to make sure that everything is going smoothly, all the spacing on stage. Even your legs all go to the same height. Like nobody's higher or lower. I mean, I'm just like, is someone coming out with a ruler? It's crazy. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And you were talking about learning and Clara, you, I, Full disclosure, I've known Clara since, well, not since you were little, for, but for many years now. And it's amazing to see you grow as a dancer. How long have you been performing in the Nutcracker? I've been performing in this Nutcracker since third grade. So I think that was 2013. Third grade? Yeah, I know. Wow, I feel it's bad. been a I long time. Earlier. I'm a <laughs> terrible friend. It's okay. You won't be able to pick them out. It's. A, I mean, I think it's interesting, though, because you both came through this whole program. You grew up in Tacoma, Amanda, but you came through the Pacific Northwest Ballet as well, right? Yes. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, I think that, so when I first came, they were doing Ken Stoll's version of the Nutcracker, mm -hmm. and so when I was in her position as a PD, um, they introduced this version of the Nutcracker, which I actually, it was the first Nutcracker I saw because my family is from New York City. Okay. And so I saw New York City Ballet do it, and I was like, ah. I want to do that for a living. Wow. Like, I, just, like, I was like, oh, I want to do that. I saw Maria Krauske do Sugar Pump Fairy, and I was like, I'm going to do that one day. Okay, I have the chills right now. And so, like, being able to, you know, like, say that I've now, like, accomplished doing, like, my dream of being the Sugar Pump Fairy in, like, a production like this is incredible. And even, like, with all that, like, currently I'm, you know, injured, but getting back and better and still I'm like, wow, like I just can't believe that, you know, I've been able to, to do that in my career this far. Um, and it's so exciting to see like all of the young people like accomplishing things too. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you saw that like by seeing the show. Oh, I did. Yes. The show was incredible. It was just incredible to see. And, and I saw Clara on stage and all the kids are like, there's Clara out there. I'm like, shh, guys, <laughs> keep it together. But speaking of kids, you know, one of the things that makes the Nutcracker such a unique production to other shows like Swan Lake is that the professionals and the kids get to be on stage together. How does that change the vibe? I think it brings us all together. It's almost like a family setting because when you're little, I know you were the same, you grow up watching these dancers in these roles and to now be performing those roles that you've always watched and admired is so inspiring. And I think it's inspiring to be older and watching those kids because they're so excited and there's that magic there. And so I think it really just brings us all together. Yeah. And it also just, yeah, it reminds you like why you're doing what you're doing because you can mm -hmm. see how much you've accomplished and just seeing that you can like make, you know, all of these kids inspired and happy and feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. I think that's, yeah, that's honestly the best part about Nutcracker. What a great point. What a great point both of you brought up. You know, we talked a lot about um, the volume of shows for the Nutcracker. I came to a matinee, but I think there was a show that night. I, I saw you the other day as you were leaving your house and you were like, I'm like, where are you going? Like, I gotta go to work. I'm, oh my gosh. How, how often are you all performing? 
gonna let you take that one first. We're performing, how many shows are there? A little less than 40. Yeah, a little less than 40. Leaf. A lot of shows. Wow. <laughs> There's usually two a day. Mm -hmm. We started Wednesday of this week and we go until Sunday. Yeah. And at least the professional division students are performing every show yeah. for the most part. So we're pretty on. And it's amazing. The children do a lot too. They do, I think it's one show a day, but that's still like 20, 25, 20 shows wow. per cast. Yeah. And just thinking about the fact that they're also in school is it's a lot. It's a lot of dedication to like yes. choose to be part of this. It's a lot of driving. Um, I would also <laughs> say just like the corner ballet or like what the professional division is also doing. Um, they carry the ballet, no. even though obviously like you know the Sugar Puff Fairy and the Dew Drop and all those things are amazing. There's a lot of core members that also do those roles yeah. while also being a snowflake yeah. and a flower and all these things, and they. Yeah, they just really make the show go on and are ready at any moment to fill in for someone. And so I just have to commend like all of them. Well, I think you all are incredible. You, true, I've never seen athletes of the caliber that you are out there on stage. It's just beautiful. And I understand we only have about 30 seconds left, but I just have to ask, I understand that you're also preparing for the next ballet and the ballet after that. Yeah. Yes. While doing the Nutcracker. Yeah. Going to rehearsal yeah. for that right after this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you give us a hint what the next ballet is? It's, uh, I don't even know. It's Swan Lake. I was yeah. going to say it oh. rhymes with this, but. Uh. <laughs> Swan Lake. There you have it. Heard it here first, folks. Thank you both so much for, for everything you do to bring such joy to so many of us. You really make magic on the stage, and it's a pleasure to watch you. Sanity. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking about this city because it is so full of holiday history. Honestly, did you know that the Frederick and Nelsons used to have live animals like seals? I mean, what doesn't say holiday like a couple of seals? And we're going to have a sentimental look at Seattle holiday history when we come back. Welcome back to New Day Northwest. The city is really shining this holiday season. And in fact, Seattle is loaded with holiday history. Some still here, some gone. But Felix Bunnell, historian Felix Bunnell, is, is with us to share some of the more nostalgic holiday memories in Seattle, which you know a lot about. It's some very sentimental downtown spots. I love downtown Seattle. Any time of year, Christmas time, when there's colored lights everywhere, it's very special. Mm -hmm. And then these little spots, like my favorite is probably the old Frederick and Nelson building. It's now Nordstrom. But back in the 40s and 50s, they would put on these elaborate displays with live seals. They'd have live puppet shows, like a college professor and a bunch of co-eds doing live puppet shows in the windows. They, people after Thanksgiving would go down after Thanksgiving dinner to see the windows debut. It was a really big deal. It's those same windows where Santa Claus photos were invented in the 1940s. A PI photographer, in the, when the PI building was across the street, looked over, saw kids lined up for Santa Claus and thought, you know, I could take pictures and make money. And so in 1944, he took a couple weeks off from work, made like three times his annual salary, and said, you know, I'm not going to be a photographer for the PI anymore. I'm going to do Santa photos once a year and live like a king. This so, was the person who invented right in, in downtown here in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. I love when you told me these yeah, stories. Yep. <laughs> All right, um, so what about 4th <laughs> Avenue and Pine Street, the old Bon Marche? Another great department store. You know, department stores are the retail experience of the 20th century, mm -hmm. right, and all the decorations. And that big star, you know, it goes back to the 1950s. It was, originally was a big tree, a big, like, big lighted tree hanging from the side of the building. Eventually it morphed in 1957 is when the star that we know today, the look of it anyway, debuted. I love that it, star. It went through some troubles in the last couple of years, but it's back and it's here to stay and it's just this quintessential landmark for Seattle downtown holiday history. It really feels so beautiful when you're walking around and you see that star. It's hopeful. It really does inspire yep. hope and happiness. Yep. And it's, it's really key. Let's go to Fifth Avenue and University Street, the Fairmont Olympic, which is just yeah. jaw-dropping this time of year. You know, I love old movies. A lot of big-time movies, like Christmas-time movies, are always in some big grand mm -hmm. hotel. And yeah. any grand hotel, that's the Olympic Hotel in downtown Seattle, the Fairmont Olympic. It opened just in time for Christmas of 1924, so it's almost its centennial next year. Mm -hmm. Just go in the lobby and kind of imagine that you're from out of town. You're trying to get, you know, trying to get to where you're going, or you can just, you know, you know, you'll be going home to your own place later. Watch the travelers going through with colored lights, the cocktails. It's just a great spot. It really is a beautiful. Spot. I actually went there with our executive producer for cocktails last year, nice. and it was just so nice to sit there and be in that space. And you know what we did? We did what you said. When you go to the Fairmont, you go to the mezzanine level, and you look at all the history and yep. all the pictures, and it really just takes you back. A gorgeous space, yeah. All right, let's go to Fifth Avenue Theater, which is one of my favorite places. The most ornate theater in downtown Seattle dates back to the 1920s. I think they've got White Christmas there this year, but I remember one year back in the late 80s, they were showing movies there, and I went with a bunch of friends, and we saw It's a Wonderful Life. 
in that movie theater. It's the best experience I've ever had watching a Christmas movie in that gorgeous, gorgeous landmark of a theater. Have you been to it at Christmas yet? I haven't been to it. You no, go yeah. check that out. You're going to love it. <laughs> All right, let's head down, down to Pike Place Market now, which is always beautiful this time My of year. My favorite spot. You have to go on Christmas Eve or some day, just a few days before Christmas, and go early in the morning when it's still dark so you can see the colored lights all mm -hmm. that up. Go have breakfast at the Athenian, get fortified. Then go to the De Laurentiis Italian Market. It'll be packed. There'll be millions of people trying to get there. You got to go and get like one of those panettone loaves. Or I like to get um, Jordan almonds. You know those sort of hard. I, I know a Jordan almond. I've got my any broken excuse teeth to, now. Yeah, any almond. excuse to go to De Laurentiis on the Christmas Eve morning is just. There's nothing that, that says Christmas for them. To get anise right. for your anise cookies. Exactly. I'm going to have to share yep, yep. some of those with okay, you. Okay. All right, you're going to love them. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Um, King Street Station. Is it's, it decorated? Is it just beautiful? There might be little decorations on the counter and sort of thing, but it's, it's a place where people have come and gone through Seattle since 1906. Wow. And I like to imagine World War II, when people were heading out or heading home, all the reunions, the farewells that happened there, it's a very emotional spot. And there's something about trains and Christmas that are directly tied, in my mind, I think about Christmas time, whether it's model trains mm -hmm. going around the tree or just this notion of traveling on a train to get home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Go and watch people traveling somewhere. You know, the, the romance has been stomped out of airports, right? Nobody, nobody says like, oh, the airport. Oh, I can't oh, wait to it's, sit in It's this so nostalgic. New. But train stations are still nostalgic and still, even though if you're traveling somewhere just for business or whatever, yeah. it's just, it says something magical about travel still. And that's, I cling to that. <laughs> I cling to that too. It is so beautiful. I hadn't been to King Street Station. I dropped many people off, but I hadn't been inside till I recently, a couple, about a year ago, was going to Portland. Yeah. And I walked inside and I was just... My breath was taken away at the beauty about the care and the workmanship that went into building, building that. Talk, can you tell me a little bit about the history of train stations? Because the, the Sacramento train station, the Portland train station, all the train stations along that line are gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, that one dates to 1906. It's the mm -hmm. golden age of rail travel in the United States. It was a very complicated mess of train tracks coming through the city. They kind of struck this agreement to build a station on the edge of downtown, kind of get things all squared away and, and take away this mess that was along the waterfront. And that's been the main station. It served continuously. Other stations have come and gone. That one has been in continuous operation for 117 years. And so did they know that while building it? Because a lot of times you think about when, when we build structures in the past, you think about the pioneer towns. I mean, this is built with such a grand flair and, and, and it's so thoughtful and the marble and everything. Why did they put that much effort into these train stations? I think it was all ego. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's modeled on the Campanile in Venice, that tower. Mm. Look at the pictures in Venice, the train station matches it. It's just gorgeous. So beautiful. Yeah. Um, I have my final and almost favorite holiday decoration would be the King 5 broadcast tower that we, the only TV station, I might add, actually decorates for the holidays and turns into a giant Christmas what tree. What a coincidence. Is this show on King? Oh, my goodness. I didn't know that. Oh. No, so the drive home, go up Queen Anne Hill, go, yeah. either go to Cary Park or go to one of the, the viewpoints on any part of Queen Anne Hill. First, you get eye level with the Space Needle. See the Space Needle decoration. That's kind of a special thing. Yeah. And then head a few more blocks up there to Gaylor Street and pull up right under the King 5 tower and look up at it. You get this weird kind of crick in your neck, but you get this whole appreciation for this thing. You see the lights kind of twinkling and stuff. Then when you see it, when it's whether you head north or south, mm -hmm. and you see it, you have this difference like, hey, I was there. It's kind of weird, but it's sort of, it's a special thing. It's been, it's been a fact of holiday life in Seattle for decades. For decades. And it really does bring me a sense of pride that, that we still do that every year. Yeah. I feel like so many traditions are, are falling away, but we still do it every year because apparently we're the only TV station that, that loves the holidays. Is this show on King TV? Well, did I mention this is on King TV? <laughs> no, but seriously and truly, I, I have to say, it is it is really neat to see that. Yeah. And it is beautiful to see everything around around this time of year. So I'm so yeah. grateful that you brought it into context. I'm so grateful that you shared all of this with us. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. Happy holidays, Happy Felix. holidays, you too. You are a gift <laughs> you to are New too. Day Northwest <laughs> and King 5. <laughs> I just want to put that out is there. Is this show on King It's five? on King 5. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So is the, the, the big transfer. That big tower? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. King 5. Um, all right. <laughs> well, um, we can't get enough nutcrackers. And coming up next, we thought we'd throw a nutcracker-themed party. And, of course, party planner Monica Hart is here to make it dazzle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Welcome back. We are here at McCaw Hall celebrating the Nutcracker. It is a really fun time of year, and Nutcrackers 
are really having a moment right now. And I know that because my friend Monica Hart told <laughs> me so. So you actually featured them in, in this entire beautiful party tablescape yes. that we're yeah, creating here today. Cracker magic to add to your holiday entertaining. Why not, right? I think it's, it's wonderful. the time of year. Tis the season. Tis the season. So actually, before we get started with this, I have to ask, because a little birdie told me that you were actually in the Nutcracker once. I, this is true. It was one night only performance. Um, I had the opportunity to play the grandmother. So I did the makeup and the costume. No one threw anything. So I guess it was OK. That you know? is so cool. So you have so, a very special yeah, connection to this, to this whole theme in general. Yeah. So uh, how, how do you get started planning something that you have like a really special place in your heart for? Well, I pull in things like beaded pieces, um, mm -hmm. fun patterns like uh, plaids and harlequins and a lot of light colors, a little pop of red, black and white, and just roll it all together, a little tinsel down the front, and you have a little nutcracker theme going. That's great. Yeah. All right, well, let's start with these storybooks. What is these? Okay, so I love to have an interactive element on the table. So these are really fun books. This is very nostalgic. It's a nutcracker book, a pop-up book. It was my son's, and you can see, like, you can open up the doors, and there's the crisp. Christmas Aww. tree. There's a battle. Um, go ahead. I think it's this okay. one oh, more. Oh. Oh, go ahead and Ooh. pull that. Notice it's tattered. My son uh, had a lot of fun there with the Nutcracker and all so, that. So you know, I would have never thought. So guests will yes. actually pick this up and, and play with it and yes. look through it. My son, I, I introduced him when he was eight months old, and to this day, every season we go through the book. Now, my friend had this one, and this is incredible. This is brand new, so I'm going to open this up, okay. and this is interactive as well. Go if you would, please. Press that button. Check it out, yes. Every page has a new song from the Nutcracker Ballet. Oh, it tells so the fun. story, it's so fun. I think your kids would totally dig it. I have kids to of get all this ages, one. I love it. Isn't that fun? We're having yeah. fun with that book. Yeah, and so we're, there's we're, that. We're grown up. That's really fun. So, another DIY element is the snowflake down here. These okay. are so oh, easy to so make. Cool. They're paper bag snowflakes. You can just get paper bags at the craft store, the grocery store. And what you do is you have a paper bag like this, flat side down, okay. and you're going to do some uh, uh, glue gun. Right here, okay, a little so, T, uh, in a T, in a T okay. and then you're going to take the next one and put it on there, and you okay. line it up, do it again, right. nine. Nine is the magic number. So nine, you just keep doing nine. nine. Keep, okay. Right, and then All you right. get your scissors, and you're going to cut out a pattern like this. Now, it doesn't Ooh. look like much. It's not even symmetrical, if I'm being honest. And then you, uh, with all that glue, then you go like this. <gasps> Oh, it's it magic. And now you've got your little snowflake. That looks like magic. Yeah, so you can just use uh, craft store paper bags, grocery store paper bags, super inexpensive, eight minutes. Remember, the magic number is nine, flap side down. I'm going to do that okay. with my kids. What a super fun, fun. I know, really fun, fun. thing to do with the kids. Okay. okay, another fun thing is this here is just a like a hat box. Oh, and what I've done is I've, yeah, I've wrapped it in nutcracker paper. Used oh, you wrapped little, it in the paper. Yeah, little candy stripe ribbon. I um, heaped it with fresh roses, and you have an Insta centerpiece for the holidays. You are genius. Okay, th I love this. This is a tradition at my house. We always have little uh, Christmas You've made poppers uh, for I, me before. Yes, I have. Yes. Christmas crackers, poppers. Okay, usually they pop. These yeah, don't, these because are... this is your napkin on the oh. table, and inside is your fun little prizes. So go ahead and unwrap it. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. and so that's super fun. Kind of people get involved, and then you got the candy all over well, the table. Well, it's super and elegant, and, and, and it's fun. Kind of fun, and so you unwrap this. You put the napkin in your lap. <gasps> and then oh, look at this. And they've got your little fun prizes inside. And is this is this like a toilet paper roll? No, not at all. No, you order those online. I mean, hey, look, there's nothing wrong with I will not go there. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah. reuse. You order those online. Reduce, <laughs> reuse, and recycle. I have limits, yeah. So this is fun, too. This is just a little snowflake uh, candy, and I've kind of got a little glassine, whoops, glassine so, bag like this, so that's really fun. Well, you know what? I was yeah. actually just trying to think of how to, to present some of the things I'm going to make for my neighbors in a right. classy Isn't way. Isn't that cute? Craft this store. so cute. Yeah. That's a little snowflake, you know. Thing going on. There. You okay. just, did you glue that on? Nope. Double sided tape. tape. Yep. I love that oh stuff. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you I love, this. of course, the Mouse King. This is like 30 years old, I think, the Mouse King. And then look at this centerpiece. This is actually a beautiful stag, and I've nestled it in rice. You put it in rice? Yeah, put it in rice. Anything under glass is beautiful. It's elevated. Mm -hmm. Tuck in some twinkle lights, and you've got yourself, again, another centerpiece. So that's fun. And check out this guy. Can you make it that work? That's an old nut. A rabbit. Oh, a rabbit out of his hat. Where did you get this cute? That was like vintage Mobax back. 
back in the day. Yeah, Aww. so, so fun. And I, I love also to do some food over here. Oh, yes. So what I did is I made some little naked angel food cake. I've got little uh, cupcakes. The Harlequin paper is really fun. These are really cute. These are all the uh, Nutcracker uh, characters that I popped in there. Oh, there's Clara. Yeah. There's, yeah. oh, that's they're all, they're all The gang's all here. The, yeah, the crew's all here. And then I did a little rosemary on top, so I have a rosemary forest from my garden, fresh rosemary. That's kind of fun. And maybe grab, if you would, please, some of those almonds. Oh, yes. Yeah, let's sprinkle a few on the top. I've okay. got uh, curls of. Oh, there that's fun. And then we've got a drink at the end because we always finish Wait, with I, a cocktail. Wait, I do have a question. So yeah. you actually, if I wanted, if I was being super lazy, yeah. I could just uh, get an a, a angel food cake, cut it in little slices and absolutely what did you put on them um it's well i've got uh, vanilla frosting oh. and then i mix in a little whipped whip cream as well and then we always end with a cheers so i've got some champagne for both of us check this out these are so elegant but they're plastic they're plastic they're great if you have a big gathering up, I, I love these and the fun okay go ahead if you would I'll i would be delighted down. to thank you fill your shampoo let's raise a glass to the holiday season raise a and glass to the holiday season to friends who yes. never let us down like Monica Hart, who always has oh, taught bless me. You. I'm so honored to be here. And I have, let's raise a glass to the Nutcracker Ballet. It's been just an institution. Just and cheers, cheers to you, my friend. You are such a gift to us. Thank you, thank you so Happy much holiday. for being here yeah. and always teaching I'm us. I'm honored. So many yeah. wonderful things. Thank you. I think we need to have a magical moment before we end the show. Absolutely. Gloria, can you have it snow? Oh, yes. Whoa. Beautiful. All right, well, now we're talking. Now we're yeah. talking. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And a big, big thank you to the Pacific Northwest Ballet at McCaw Hall for inviting us here, for allowing us to be here today. And my friends, I want you to get out there, have a wonderful holiday season, and enjoy your new day. We'll see you next time. It's a new